and it's day one and you walking in there on the first day, man, you in there, man. But you feel something. It's right in here, man. And it's screaming and it's yelling and it's saying, release me. And it's saying, I am the number one determinant of the success or failure of my students. Hey, y'all, when you get back, kick some butt, and I'll see you in the winner's circle celebrating your victory. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, you got this, you got this, you got this. Thank you, everybody. And we are live. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to week 198. Can you believe that? Two sessions from 200 of the AP and New Principles Academy. Let me see who we got in the building this morning. We got Sharon Wright, Blandon PA, Mona Abamola, Abam, Abamolak is in the building. She said, Good morning to my wife and myself. We got AP Patrick Lawrence in the building, Rodney Richardson, Grace Castaneda, Kyle. Texas Rodney out down there in Hampton. We got our uh, Takesha High in Virginia, Dawn Rogers, Richmond, Virginia, Marsha Post, San Diego. I gotta be in touch with you, Marsha. I'll be in touch. I'll be in touch. Um Arlette Johnson, Connecticut AP Elementary Principal of the Year. She, assistant Principal of the Year. We got the Principal of the Year right here. Assistant Principal of the Year. She'll be on with me soon, man. I can't wait. We got Dr. Rachel Edo Eckett, man. I was in her company yesterday down in Howard County, Maryland. Always good to see the good Dr. Rachel Edo Eckett. And she'll, she was on here. If you didn't see that interview, go back to last summer, last July. And then she'll be back this summer, I think it is. We got... um. Where we at? Lysandra Brackens in NC, North Carolina. Uh, Vanessa Zeskin. This thing just jumped, man. A lot of y'all popped on at the same time. Principal Otis Kitchen the second is in the building. Hit the sh hit the share button. Hit the retweet. Hit the repost. Hit the like button, man. Generate them algorithms. Hit the repost. Whatever platform you're watching on, make sure that people know. Tag somebody. Uh, hit the uh, Facebook uh, administrator groups as well. Let them know we're here. We're here. We we dropping all this information, man. I got the big time guests on here, but let me let me stay focused right now. We got Tanya Jackson in the building. Ronald Ronald Pugh, Cedar Hill, Texas. Demetrius Scott, Doctor Demetrius Scott's in the building. My brother Michael Benton is here. Much success to you as you continue with that that journey, sir. I won't be public with it. Um, MPA Jaguar, Josh Tovar, my brother, is in the building. Donna Medina, Shara Gantz in the building. Principal Dr. Tammy Taylor is in the building. Uh, Melissa Jones, and, and by the way, Create and Educate Dr. Tammy Taylor, Dr. Sheikha Houston, every every Saturday Saturday morning at 1030, um, right after Sean Hurts, uh, 10 o'clock. I'll get ready to give it like a name. Sean Hurt, the turnaround principal, right? 10 o'clock every Saturday morning on Facebook Live. And then Josh Tovar, team, Dean Packard at 7 o'clock on Sunday nights, Facebook Live. Eastern, these are all Eastern times. Jasmine Harris, we're, we're the Fantastic Four. Not four people, but four, uh, four platforms. Jasmine Harris in the building out there in California. Yolanda McKinney, good to see you the other day when I was doing that uh, that virtual keynote that day. Man, that was, that was special. Uh, there's Sean right there. So I just said it. Sean Hurts in the building, always knocking it out the park. Carol Blanchard, Melissa Jones, Chunu. I know you're getting better. And prayers are up for all it for uh, all of us are bringing to you, Melissa. I know you're getting better, and keep on getting better, and keep your faith, as I know you will. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Hafiz Melton is in the building. Good to see you. Tell the daughter I said hello. Always. Uh, the Queen. Is in the building. Kimberly Broughton Cafele, the queen of the castle, man. She's here. She's here. We got uh J Jacqueline Harriet 
holding it down in Nova Scotia. She's gonna be here in March, man. We got the we got the Women's History Month coming, man. She's gonna be one of the guests, man. I got a little international day coming. I didn't even tell her all that, but we got we got a little international flavor happening on that one. We got we got Jacqueline from up in Nova Scotia. We got we we got we got my colleague Jennifer out in Trinidad and Tobago. We got another colleague out in uh, Saint Eustatius, um, which is part of the Dutch Caribbean. Man, we gonna have a special day that day. Uh, we got Mrs. Truesdale AP in the building in Atlanta. We got uh, Annette Mack, and she said good morning and let's go. John Herricks, Sheka Houston, Doctor Sheka Houston is in the building. Uh, check that inbox I sent you to. Arcella Austri. Dot Makiba Jeter, principal Dot Makiba Jeter's in the building. Tony McClenny, Lynette Wilson, Otis Kitchen. And uh, well, let me see. Let me see. Oh, I said Otis already. Uh, Bev Hill, uh, where we are? Where we at? Edwin Garcia, man, it's 1102. I need to stop, man. Darnell McElveen, hotep to you. Um, I'm gonna I'm 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 cut it down. I'm gonna cut it short right here. Let me just see if I got any, any of the local homies in the building. I do see champions. Principal, he's in Atlanta, uh, Alabama. He's not local, but he's going to be on the platform later in the year. I see Jessica, Jessica Jones, uh, J Janae from Baton Rouge. But any, let me see if I see any local homies. Cause I don't. I never want to leave out one of the local homies. I don't see nobody. Everybody. I got. I got. Shout out Joe Sanfilippo, man. Doctor Joe Sanfilippo, man. That's that's my man, man. He he comes on at nine. They come on at nine o'clock typically. They came on at nine thirty today, but typically nine o'clock. Uh, the weekly show with Jimmy and Joe. Check them out. Jimmy Casas, Joe Sanfilippo, man. Those, yeah, th those are two of my OG brothers, man. They, uh, we all, yeah, hey, hey, Joe, we getting old out here, man. You know, <laughs> we getting old. I remember when I was in this thing, man, and I was one of them young cats, and now, man, I walk in there with all this gray on my face, man. <laughs> hey y'all hey Hallie, elaine couch i see you Hallie. i see you i see you i they go to i see the local homies so i can stop here my man jim I, i'm not gonna call you by your your name because you may not want that so it's lammy Jimma, and uh that's how you want me because i don't know if you want me to call you by the name i know you by so he's from east orange he's doing his thing in, in in the schools and that's one of my former students man what a blessing all the time when your former students see it as they were saying in the church not robbery to come out and and, and hang out i see you hovet too as well hovet dixon and come and hang out with their their their, their former principal right so Good stuff. Good to see you, sir. Hey, y'all, I'm going to get it started because we got a lot to say. I got I got the Connecticut principal of the year who's also the principal of a national blue ribbon school. So that means she's doing some stuff, man. And I'm, I'm glad she's here. So let me get it started. Let me get through all my stuff. So formally to all of you. Good morning. Greetings. Welcome to week 198 of the AP and New Principles Academy. I don't know about you, but I think I know because you did check in. I mean, it could be somebody it was a rough week and, and the mindset, because I hear this all over, all over America, the mindset is, Kefele, the weeks are long. The weeks can be difficult. The weeks can be challenging. And I come on this academy to get some fire. I mean, people tell me that all the time. I check, I come on live, Cafe Lake, because I need that fire to just give me that reset. So I'm going to give you that fire. And I'm going to let you know how I'm feeling as it relates to that fire. Because I'm on fire! Woo! And I'm going to tell you something. I did four states this week, man. I did four states. I got jet lag. I'm sleep deprived. My diet wasn't all that good either. But I'm gonna tell you something. I'm I got that fire, man. Because I'm excited about life. I'm excited about the work. But most importantly, I'm excited about being right here with you all, the AP and New Principles Academy fam. Hit that share button. Let them know. Hit that retweet. Hit that repost. Hit that like button. Call somebody. Text somebody. Tag somebody. And hit them Facebook principal uh, leadership groups, right? Let me go through my announcements real quick, y'all. You know I do my shout outs first, man. Shout out to Cumberland County uh, counselors and administrators. I was with them, I think, Monday, man. Ooh, we had a good time, man. 
We had a good time. Shout out to Omaha, Nebraska assistant principals. We had a good discussion. Anytime I got the APs. Shout out to Ridgeview Middle School in Columbus, Ohio, under the leadership of Principal Natalie James. Oh, man. We had a great time, man. We had a great time. There's some people that was in the room I want to shout out, but I can't take all that time. Just them folks in the room, man. Shout out to all of y'all, right? But 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 shout out to the staff. Shout out to Principal James. Uh, shout out to Panorama Education Systems for Change Virtual Summit. I even did a virtual keynote, man. Shout out to them, man. They all the comments in the thread, man. They like you on fire, man. You blazing, man. We needed this. I'm like, that, that, see, when when people be saying that to me while I'm speaking, whether it be virtually or in person, that make me that make me get hotter, man. <laughs> right. So they kept elevating me in that 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 time I did that. Shout out to how How uh, Howard County Schools, man, down there in Maryland, man. I did four presentations <laughs> yesterday, man. Two keynotes with the education support professionals, two different audiences, man. That's the power professionals, secretaries, uh, student, student assistants, clerks. You know, that was that was that was we had a great time. Shout out to the alternative ed teachers. I, I had in that chance to talk to them. Man. They, you know, they dealing with, you know, they, they got different kind of challenges. And it was just great being in the room with them. And shout out to the three administrating administrative teams from Howard County that I talked to yesterday from Thomas Viaduct Middle School, Oakland Mills Middle School and Harper's Choice Middle School. Man, they had some young bloods in there, man. some young administrators in the room and they had these APs, man. I thought they were principals the way they were talking, man. I hope they on here right now. And, uh, and, and and shout out to young principal Denise, uh, Denise Young, man, second year doing her thing man i met her yesterday down there as well and just uh shout out to howard county man shout out to my contact man dr um dr uh oh my god i'm dr terry um oh my oh, oh my god i'm having a, a mental block dr terry savage man i was you know that's one of them 63 things man shout out to shout out to her man just you know her her confidence in me coming down there so many times all right y'all let me let me let me welcome the first timers man first timers if this is your first time you missed 197 sessions i see you denise young that's Principal Young right there. I see you. Keep on doing what you do. You're going to be a superstar in here. We're going to have you on here as a guest one day, too, talking about all your successes after doing these early years. Um, but, yeah, for the first timers, 197. You missed 197 sessions, man. And like I say all the time, this is the place to be, along with my colleagues with the Fantastic Four on Saturday mornings. This, this is it right here. Anywhere else you need to be, right here with us, starting at 10 o'clock. With Sean Hurt, 1030 Create and Educate, me, 1055, Josh Tovar and Dean Packard at uh, Unlock the Middle on Sunday night at 7. That's the only place to be, right? Everything else, secondary. <laughs> All right. Um, keep in mind, I want you to subscribe to the AP and New Principals Academy um, uh, YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. Hit that little button and subscribe. Hit that notification button, too, so you always know when I'm on live, right? So subscribe to that. And then make sure you check out my new, my, my new um, YouTube shorts. Do them every I, I said I was gonna do them every Wednesday, but sometimes Wednesday inconvenience. I had to do it Tuesday this week, but I'm gonna do it every midweek. It's not gonna be Monday, it's not gonna be Friday, right? So anywhere between Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, depending on my, my travel schedule. But uh make sure you check us out. Uh check check out the videos. Uh YouTube short 60 seconds. Uh just I call it midweek fire. And the one I did this week was called If Your School Walls Could Talk, right? If your school walls could talk, what would they say? Right. Check that out. 60 seconds, but a whole lot of whole lot of whole lot of power, whole lot of fire within those 60 seconds. But also check out them new videos I just made a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week, whatever it was, becoming a professional speaker. I said, you asked for it. I gave it to you free. I ain't trying to make no money. I just made these two. It's, it's about a little less than three and a half hours between the two. And I'm getting ready to make a third. Might make it today. You know, and, uh, you never know. But I'm, I'm, I'm giving you all the secrets free of choice, free of choice for free that i'm letting you know how to become a speaker right i'm giving you some of my secrets i ain't giving them all to you i get i'm giving you some of them but you just go to the same youtube channel ap and new principles academy and uh check it out right uh two videos and then i got the four videos on the same playlist on writing a best-selling book so between those six videos which is about seven hours of content you should have a lot 
to get started. All right, let's go. Uh, be sure to like and follow the AP and New Principles Academy Facebook page. And I'm going to tell you, I haven't written an essay maybe in two weeks because I'd be, I, I'm just burnt out on, on Sundays. And I'm telling you now, I'm not writing one tomorrow. I got a flight tomorrow. On Super Bowl Sunday, I got a flight. I got an early flight so that I can catch the game in Nashville, right, on, 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 in my hotel room. So I'm not writing no essay tomorrow, right? I'll be back in, in, in full force the week after. You know, I got to take another mental health day so that I could get back on a plane. I was on a plane every day this week. Then I was on a plane last night. Then I'm back on a plane tomorrow morning. Right. Uh, the books real quick. I appreciate y'all. So I got to keep showing you. Um, and I'm missing one. Here it is. If you don't have the assistant principal 50, this is like my perennial bestseller. Get yourself a copy off of Amazon. Right. Or ASCD. If you don't have the assistant principal 50, I mean, the assistant principal identity. Get yourself, get yourself a copy, man. I, I feel myself keep making these little mistakes. That's because I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. System Principal Identity. Make sure you get yourself a copy. That's my newest book. Make you make sure you get the Principal 50. The Aspiring Principal 50. Is my school a better school because I lead it? And the Equity and Social Justice Education 50. I got more books here. You know, I write it. You know, I got a lot of books, y'all. But I ain't going to take time showing you all that. Just uh, go to Amazon. Put my name in their, their search and get whatever books that are pertinent to your career, right? I promise you um, the books are going to be beneficial for you. Let me uh, quickly do my, my uh, oh, my School Leadership Institute. Join me in Houston, July 9 and 10. Houston, Texas, July 9 and 10. Go to principalcafele.com. Scroll down to the Principal Cafele announcements. Click the link for the for the institute School Leadership Institute with Principal Cafele. Join me in person, man. Let's be in the same room together breaking all this leadership down. We're going to talk a lot about instructional leadership over the summer, man. We're going to really break that down. And, and, and we're going to juxtapose it with, with culture, school culture, to make sure that we can be the, the, the instructional leaders, the instructional coaches that we want to be, and the culture of the building not prohibiting us from being that instructional leader slash instructional coach. So join me in Houston, July 9 and 10. Go to the um, to my website, principalcafele.com. Scroll down, register, and I'll see you in Houston. Let me do my monologue real quick, y'all. And then I got, I want to bring up my guest, my superstar guest. Um, my monologue is a question. Are you a national blue ribbon school? That's my question. Let me give it to you again. Are you right now under your leadership, whether you be assistant principal or principal, are you a national blue ribbon school? Now, I could do a whole session on this question, but I'm not because it's just a monologue. But let me say this to you. I go a lot of places where they've never heard of Blue Ribbon. A lot of places. Most places I go, there's a lot of people in the room like, what is that? Like, like I'm saying, are you striving to be Blue Ribbon School? And they'll say, what is that? Blue Ribbon means it comes from the U.S. Department of Education. And it, and it means that on the one hand, you achieve it at high levels. But on the other hand, it means you've demonstrated significant growth. So it depends on, on, on how they categorize your school, right? And, and as they categorize your school, it might be that your school is just performing at these high levels and we want to recognize you as one of America's best. But it could be that you've been a low performing school and you've demonstrated considerable significant growth over a period of time and they want to recognize you as one of America's best schools. So I'm asking you, are you a national blue ribbon school now someone who's not the answer is obviously you'll say no but that's why i'm doing this as a monologue you got to change that thinking see when we ask a question the answer is not always what we are in real time and i don't mean just in terms of this question any question if 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 you asked me years ago are you a top national speaker like like they asked me this when i was only speaking in cafeterias if someone said, are you a top national speaker? Here's my answer. Oh, yeah. Yes. You might be thinking, what, what are you talking about? Because my response is not just for where I am in real time. My response is where, for what I see, what I foresee myself becoming over time. So I'm not just going to claim where I am right now. I'm going to claim where I'm going to be. If you ask me now. Have you written 20 books yet? Yes. 
But the reality is I've only written 13, 14, 13 of the public. I got a manuscript sitting on this computer that I haven't submitted yet. I don't know when I'm going to submit. But if but but I'm going to write 20. So if you ask me, did you have you written 20 books yet? Yeah. Because that's what I envision. See, when you ask me a question, I'm not just I'm not just responding to where I am in real time. I'm responding to where I'm going to be. When I name myself, some of y'all like name yourself. What you mean? Just stay with me on this. I got to figure out how I'm getting generating them little symbols on that screen like that. That's something new that came with one of these these upgrades. Right. Stop doing that. Right. So let me put my hands down. Right. So. When I changed my name to Baruti, which means teacher, I wasn't a teacher. I was not a teacher. I wasn't even studying education because this I, I changed it in undergrad school. But I knew I was going to become one. So I embraced this name Baruti, which means teacher from Botswana. Because the name spoke to not where who I was now. The name spoke to where I was going. And guess where I went? <laughs> not only did I go to teacher, but I went to teacher of the year. Not only at the building level, but at the district level, but at the county level. And New Jersey State finalist teacher of the year. I'm I'm a college student walking them grounds of that campus to get from class to class. But I take on this name Baruti because I knew where I was going. So when I ask you, are you blue ribbon school? The answer is yes. You just have to put measures in place to get there. But you got to see it. Now, if you can't see it, you got no vision. Then, 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 then you got to go to work on this person in the mirror. How are you going to lead at a high level and you got no vision for where you're going? I know where I'm going to be at 70. And it ain't going to be in no graveyard, right? I know where I'm going to be at 70 as far as this work. And I'll tell you something. I'm going to be doing this work at 70. That's seven years from now. I'm only 63. See? So... Keep all that in mind. And I think Melissa's telling me to tell y'all that uh I, I just received the um the 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 uh the global gurus top 30 award this past week. I wasn't gonna say it, but I think Melissa's trying to hint to me to just say it. So this is the fifth consecutive year, fifth consecutive year that global gurus has recognized me. I don't know that I embrace this, but I I'll take it that they embrace that they recognize me as one of the top 30 education professionals in the world. So this is the fifth consecutive year that they've given me this um this accolade. They rank me number six. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I guess I'm contradicting my whole monologue when I say I don't necessarily embrace this, <laughs> you know, but they gave it to me. I take it. Thank you. We'll leave it right there. Let's go. I got the big time guests, man. You know, our topic, we we, you know, we we just we just talk in leadership today because I, I got I got the the um the Connecticut principal of the year coming up. And I didn't really want to confine it to a topic per se. I just wanted to kind of give a smorgasbord and uh and, and just talk about some things here. So let me let me get her up here and I'm gonna change my background here and all that kind of stuff. But while I do that, good morning to you, Dr. Smith Davis. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Let me just get this screen looking like something. And uh and 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 there we go. Man, I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad you're here this morning. Uh mm -hmm. and, and what will be this morning and this afternoon. Great to see you. And it, there's so much you you've done so much. So before we get to talking, let me tell them who you are for those that may not know. Hit that share button, hit that retweet somebody. Let them know I'm done with my announcements. Dr. Keisha Smith Davis is a vis visionary educator who has de dedicated her career to shaping the future of young minds. Dr. Smith Davis began her lifelong journey as an educator, beginning as a substitute teacher with Yonkers Public Schools. That's in New York State, folks. Quickly, she obtained a position as a teacher and with the Richmond Public Schools in Richmond, Virginia. After eight years, she transitioned to the role of an assistant principal for four years in Farmville, Virginia at Prince Edward County Elementary School. Y'all might want to do some research on, 
on historically on Prince Edward County as well. But that's for another time. I've talked about it here, but we ain't doing it right now. After serving in this role, Dr. Smith Davis was recruited by Mr. Jim Daniels to serve as the principal of Great Plain Elementary School in Danbury, Connecticut. She's established, she has established herself as a trailblazer in the field of education, consistently demonstrating her unwavering commitment to the academic excellence and well-being of her students and staff. One of her most notable, one of her most notable accomplishments was guiding Great Plain Elementary School to the coveted title of National Blue Ribbon School. Awarded the U.S. Department of Ed awarded by the U.S. Department of Education in 2022. This prestigious recognition is a testament to Dr. Smith Davis' tireless efforts to raise the bar for educational excellence. Her visionary leadership and unyielding commitment to student success enabled the school to reach the pinnacle of achievement. This could this coupled with three consecutive years of being recognized as a Connecticut School of Distinction for academic achievement and growth highlights the tenacious effort to improve the academic experience for her students. Before I go on, I want to I want to remind everybody of something I read in the first paragraph. She started as a substitute teacher. I got to remind you that because sometimes, you know, we're in these positions. I was I was preaching to the paraprofessionals yesterday in, um, in, in Howard County saying, OK, you paraprofessionals, those of you who are content with that, fine. But but there's a teacher in a percentage of y'all. Don't 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 sit there procrastinating. Go on and get your degree. Go on and get your certification and keep rising. Right. So make sure you, you remember, y'all substitute teacher. National Blue Ribbon School. Let's go. Let's go. 2023, Dr. Smith Davis achieved a remarkable honor. Here it is of being named the Connecticut Elementary Principal of the Year. A testament to her exceptional leadership skills and the profound impact she's made within her school community. This prestigious recognition acknowledged, acknowledges her dedication and underscores her ability to inspire and lead her team toward excellence. Under Dr. Smith Davis' transformative leadership, Great Plain Elementary School reached new heights in academic achievement and community engagement. Her unwavering dedication to fostering a culture of inclusivity, collaboration, innovation has been instrumental in creating a school environment where staff and students thrive. Dr. Smith Davis uh, possesses a unique set of leadership qualities that have set her apart in the world of education. Her ability to inspire and empower her staff has led to a harmonious and supportive <laughs> work environment where educators are motivated to excel and are deeply invested in the growth and development of every student. She fosters an atmosphere of open communication and collaboration, ensuring that the entire school community is aligned with a shared vision of success. And finally, Dr. Smith Davis is known for her student centered approach to leadership. She believes in creating a nurturing and inclusive environment where students receive a top notch education and feel valued, heard and encouraged to, to explore their full potential. Her commitment to fostering a sense of belonging has led to improved student engagement, increased academic achievement and a strong sense of pride in the school. That's a lot, y'all. That's a lot, man. You better tell somebody we are here. Hey, y'all, get that pen out. Where's mine? Here we go. Get that pen. Get that pad. If you go on electronic, then go electronic, but get these notes down. Let's go, Doc. Um, you know, Doc, you you have accomplished a, a, a lot in education. And then, as I said while I was reading the bio, we can go all the way back to your 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 years or year, whatever long it was, as a substitute teacher. You came in at the rock bottom, right? And 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 you particularly done well as a principal. My question to you, as an educator overall, not not so much as a principal yet in terms of my, this line of questioning, as an educator, how would you describe this person, known as Dr. Keisha Smith? David. Um, I would say committed, um, enthusiastic, always willing to assist, uh, help others. Um, that's my passion. And like what I like to do is to help especially grow uh, not only school people, but our children. And most importantly, making sure all stakeholders are heard and valued. Um, this is what I do. It's what I love. And I'm thankful to be able to do it. 
So I would say um, blessed. And I think that um, the community, as far as your parents and having them engage has a lot to do with um, pushing me as, as a leader, as well as my staff. So I'm in students. So I'm really thankful. I love it. I love it. So within that, what what drives you? Right. Like and, 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 and going deeper than that word drive. What keeps you hungry to continue to not only do the work, but to excel at what you're doing? So that takes a commitment and setting goals. And it has to be within you that that's what you want to do. Um, I'm just not going to stop where I am. And I have not uh, for years, just trying to move forward and excel and achieve. And remember why I started um, in this journey in the first place. Um, your whys will always change. I started um, out going to, into education because I felt it was something that I could do and to support others. And plus my family, when you think a lot of us are first generation who have gone to college, my grandparents did not. My mother just wanted us to graduate school. So my why at the time was get an education. Later it became, um, as I saw it very clear as a teacher, that there are certain things our students could not do at the high school level. And so, you know, my why became, I need to do something different to help these students who aren't able to read or just basic math. You're talking about ninth, 10th, 11th graders, middle school. When I taught in the summer with the students, um, you know, summer school, you realize children had to take a basic test and were able to pass. So it's one thing if you just want to sit here and continue to read the script or whatever it is you want to do, but you need to think about um, what can you do? And that became my why, my purpose um, to support students and um in educating myself and others. I, I, I love it. I'm a, I want to stay there. You, it, a lot of people picked up on what you said. I'm looking at the comments about wise change. My man, Joe, Dr. Joe Sanfilippo was on here and um, he said, wise change. And that's okay. Love that. Right. And, you know, I think about, I'll, I'll, I'll zero in on the work I'm doing right now as a presenter, as a consultant. When, when I left my last school in 2011, my focus was pretty much solely black boys. That, that's where I was. The, the book that I had out at that time, Motivating Black Males to Achieve in School and Life. That was, that was my why in the work. But somewhere along the way, within a few years, it was more so on attitude. Because attitude is critical, right? But then, it, and, it, and it's still, you know, I'm still focused on boys and particularly black and brown boys. I'm still focused on attitude. But then I started delving into this whole leadership thing. And then my why shifted again. Mm -hmm. So then I'm there. But then I got to this point where I want, I want to zero in on the assistant principal, right? And the aspiring principal. So I kept shifting and shifting and shifting. And when I look back on it now, if I, if I kept myself in that one bag, I would have missed out on so many other opportunities to do so many different things. Do me a favor. Holler at our fam out here that's watching this morning. Why it's so significant that you continue to evolve in your outlook? It's important um, to never stay stagnant and satisfied with what it is that you're doing. And the why must change. So, you know, the, if you you don't grow as a person. The mindset will continue. And then if you're in this for students, then your students won't grow. The staff and the team you work with won't grow. The people around you will not grow. So it's important for you to change, uh, stay committed and, and educate yourself and continue to think outside the box and other things that you can do. Um, things will happen in your life. You will have to change. And if you don't have that open mind and that concept or that thought to do it, uh, you can find yourself in a very difficult situation. And I'm just saying that's real talk, real life. We see that with the pandemic. Um, a lot of people had to change. You're talking about jobs, thinking, um, creative ways for kids to learn, to keep staff interested, parents involved. You, you have to do it because society is changing. Look at technology. Everything is changing. You know, I'm getting ready to talk about AI in the classroom soon. I think it's important that we move with what is happening in order to support children and students for the, for the future. I love it. I love it. 
you know, Doc, um, there's I, I, I just have to make an assumption that there's somebody out there either on this live audience or someone who will see the video later on, which is where <laughs> the bulk of the views come from, the people that watch it later on. But somebody's going to see this or someone's watching right now. And they came in with that that fire, that drive you have, that that hunger, that thirst to be great. But circumstances, pressures, demands, situations, certain people have allowed them, allowed their fire to be diminished, right? Made their fire to, to, to be diminished. And now they're, they're trying to figure it out. They might be on the call now because I need to find, I need a source of new energy, new inspiration. What, what words of encouragement, Doc? Dr. Smith Davis, do you do you have for that person whose fire has diminished because of the circumstances of the work? What advice do you have for them to to to, to relight, to reignite that fire? Think about why you started whatever it is that you're doing. If it's an education, why did you start it in the first place? Because somewhere you fell in love with it or you were ambitious and, and thought you could do this and you still can. And so you have to, as a leader, continue to talk to people about this because it happens every day. So um, I think that's the job as the instructional leader to find out where your staff is. Are they happy? Talking to individuals to find out that why and what is it that that person needs? Because sometimes your fire is lost because there are roadblocks in your way. So it's up to us to support each other to help move those out or encourage that person um, to talk about what happened and then to support them on what needs to happen right in this moment. And then sometimes if the fire is going out and I honestly feel that the, you don't want to do this anymore, then I think about something else that uh, will help you. But as long as you love what you do and, and it does, it gets challenging. This job is hard. It's getting challenged. It's a challenge every day. Things are changing, but um Students matter. And as long as that's in the forefront, continue to focus on that and your dream as to why you started, I think you'll be fine. And if it was a paycheck, you're going to lose your home or whatever it is, your business. So you might as well decide, like, what is it that I really want to do? And it's, and try to keep it going. It's important that you believe in yourself. It's great stuff. Great stuff. You know, um, anybody could look at you and, 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 and we see that anybody look at anybody and, and and nobody's generic you know our our, our racial ethnic cultural all, all of those are identities you're a black woman principal and there are certain challenges that come with being a black woman principal they come with being a black male principal they come with a latino woman latino male etc there's certain challenges that come with that certain challenges that just come with a woman principal but here you are a black woman principal what advice could you give somebody out there, a black woman principal that's, at, that's watching right now or an assistant principal or an aspiring principal? What advice could you give them right now regarding being a black woman in school leadership? You got this. You can do this. Um, no matter what roadblocks or things that you think may be in your way, um, we always seem to have to rise and be the best. And that's what makes us who we are. And as women to lean on each other and to, you know, to ask someone else what it is that I need to do. It is hard. It is difficult. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it being black. And um, for a moment, the only one, you know, in, in what you're doing where you are, is kind of hard and looking around and making sure that you understand who you are and what your role is. Um, I think many of us from youth up were always taught you have to be the best because people are always thinking that you can't, but you can, um, you can excel. And that's another drive and a why, because you're always going to have to prove yourself um, in what you do and be better. And that's what exactly what keeps me going, knowing that we got this and we can do this. And so if you're out there thinking that you can't, um, I will tell you, um, this is just me, uh, prayer does help and making sure you surround yourself with positive people 
that have those same dreams and aspirations, you will move. You will be where you want to be. I love it. You know, in, in particularly, you, you, you said it, uh, surrounding yourselves with positive people. Sometimes we got to be, you know, sometimes we're, we're in these these positions, whether it be leadership or anything in life, and, and, and we're operating in these vacuums, not realizing that there are other people who are experiencing the same challenges. But if we're not aligned with them, if we're not networking with others in a, in, in a lot of places, one, what I found over the years is some of the best networking vehicles are the national conferences because there, there are people there. And, 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 and at a conference, you can kind of let your guard down a little bit because you're, you're there amongst strangers as opposed to when you're in your district and everybody knows who you are. Right. And um, and there's just 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 a plethora of networking opportunities. So folks out there, if there's somebody out there, you know, do know you're not alone. Right. There are others out here and you just need to align yourself. You need to network. You need to reach out. You need to see who's there. You need to make sure that you're heavily in, in, involved in social media so that you can know who else is out here doing the work you do. It doesn't have to be somebody in your district. It could be whomever somewhere. It could be somebody halfway across the world, but they can relate to your struggle. Right. So that good stuff, Doc. You know, lastly, before we get to our talking points, um, a lot of discussion today around this this idea called imposter syndrome. And, you know, just for clarity for anybody out there, you know, imposter syndrome is simply to give it the 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 the, the simple definition. You, you you accomplish something, but you can't embrace it was you that did it in terms of your own efforts, right? It's oh, this I must have been in the right place at the right time. Uh, oh, it's it's the people I know, my connections. Oh, it happened by luck. You know all that kind of stuff. No, like 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 if, if I could look at before I turn it to you, Doc. If I could look at myself, I, I look at the things I've done. I mean, of course, I'm going to give praise to God always, right? Of course, I'm going to give praise to my family always, right? Of course, I'm gonna give praise to to my my closer friends always. But 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 I'm also going to tell you tell you all this, and I'm going to turn it over to Doctor uh, uh, Smith Davis. Let me let me let me get Tammy's name off of here because I want y'all to see my hand on this. Y'all y'all see these hands right, right here? Whatever I've done outside of the, the entities I just named, I, I built this, y'all. I built this, right? So so when I see folks reading my books, or I walk into a room and my books are on the tables. I'm like, in my mind, I'm, I'm praising God, but I'm saying that's there's all my toil. There's all my effort. There's all that blood, sweat and tears, all that up all night writing, you know, up all night uh, perfecting my, my craft as a speaker. You know, it's, it's, it's that's that's what I built. So so when I see myself get to a certain level, I expect it. Y'all hear me. I know this ain't about me today, but y'all y'all hear me for a second. I expect it to be at that level, whatever that is. If it's best-selling author, I expect it to be best-selling author. If it's if it's if it's sought after, highly sought after presenter, I expect it to be a highly sought after presenter, right? It's it's because I built this thing with my own hands, so I'm not going to look at me. I'm not going to step outside of me, look at me, and say, I, I, I don't deserve that. I didn't I didn't do this. It's, I was in the right place at the right. No, I built this, and that's got to be the mindset that we have. So I want to flip it on to you, Doc. So much discussion out here. I see it on on the internet all the time about this thing called imposter syndrome. What are your thoughts on overcoming it? Because it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. I think you really need to know yourself and what happened. So you have to be able to tell your story. Because it's about you as to why you got where you were. Rather, you speak up if you are celebrating your victories, um, focusing on those things and being proud and thankful. Yes, a lot of people may say that or say it's some phenomenon. It's just happened. But you should be able to tell your story, build yourself. Um, you, you are the individual. And if it wasn't for a mindset, your vision, your thought, um, even collaboration, thing, whatever got you to this point. Um, it's you. It's you. And it all started up here and with someone else or individuals that may have inspired you to get there. So be proud and thankful and blessed because you are who you are. 
and said, you are who you are. Take credit for your accomplishments. Ain't, ain't, ain't no imposter. It's, it's you, right? Good stuff. Let's go to these talking points. For the audience out there, I, I want you to know how I've somewhat adjusted or shifted my format going into 2024. Um, all my guests for, for the past, I guess, three years, because I was solo the first year, uh, I was just generating questions that I felt were interesting, that I wanted to hear the, the, the guest answer and all that kind of stuff. But in 2024, I said, I want my guests to come on here and talk about what they're most passionate about. So instead of me just creating these random blind questions, I said, send me some talking points of things that you're passionate about as it relates to the work. And that's what they've all been doing. And then I will either ask them to just take that and run with it, or I'll ask them some questions regarding what they what they gave me. So I'm doing a combination of that today. So let me let me put the first one up on the screen. And it and it says, this is this is coming directly from, from Dr. Smith Davis. It says, What is your why? She said it's important to her. Why do you do what you do? is important to her and what is what is your purpose i know my earlier question kind of probably exhausted that but but anything further that you may want to say about that when you know your why it helps you navigate um what it is you want to do in life it helps you to attain your dreams and things you want to accomplish so you you must have your um why and think about that if you're a student going to college a person trying to get a job um, wanting to move to the next level, your assistant principal wanting to be um, the principal, you the principal wanting to be the soup, whatever, start your own business. You have to have that why and know what it is and why you want to do it. That is something within you. You just don't say it because someone else is doing it. You have a purpose. You have to know your purpose in life. Yeah, yeah. You got you got to know it. You, you, and, and you can't walk around purpose less so we had talked about that because of my initial question so we, we just go right to this this second one and, and you said cultivating a positive school climate and culture is at the heart of our mission wherever students feel valued a pre uh, uh respected and inspired to achieve so i, I got a three-parter for you on that one Talk to us about how you go about leading the effort of cultivating a positive school climate and culture. What is that? What is what does Dr. Smith Davis do? That starts every day. Um, being just kind, being friendly. That that when people come in the door, that they that's what they should feel when a parent visits your school or uh, someone comes in. That's important. And in order, it takes time. So people think um, maybe it's a soft skill or something that can be, it's not, it takes time. And the mindset has to change and the thinking and all stakers have to be involved and know that they want to make a difference and believe that they can. So um, creating that positive uh, culture and environment starts with, for me, prior to school starting, I have parents, community people in going over what it is that we do. My job, the, the teacher's job, every staff member, rather to tutor the nurse, whomever, bus driver, what is our role? And um, how is it that, what is their job and what is it they want from us? Because once people know uh, what is it you do, what it is that they want, the goal is for us to sit down and figure out how we're gonna get this to happen. The work comes in. And then of course, how we treat each other, the perception, your thoughts, um, I can't talk enough about kindness being a part of your culture. Um, you have to know people. You have to want to get to know people. You have to love what you do, the students, everyone. Um, that has to come across. And if that doesn't come from you as the instructional leader of the building, it will not happen. Uh, I laugh and think about when I walk in a classroom, if a teacher's desk is messy, you can best believe all the students' stuff will be that way. If the leader is happy, um, positive, look for innovative and creative ways to celebrate, be with kids and families, you can best believe the school is going to do the same way thing and the stakeholders because everyone believes that it can happen. It is very important to have that climate and culture. If you do not have a good climate and culture, you're not going to move your school. Those test scores will stay where they are. It's so much wrapped up in you can get your staff to help the the buy-in, the commitment, 
as long as you have that climate and culture. And it's nothing that I say or happen. I listen to people come in to visit um, how people feel in the school. And that's important. And that's at the forefront every day. You can't get anything done if you're not in a place where you don't feel safe, um, where people don't feel valued, that they don't have a, a say, um, that you really listen to what they say and make changes or do things. Because I don't know it all. I have to surround myself with those who do. And that's what makes a, a great leader and, and an outstanding climate and culture, because everyone has bought into what needs to happen for students and for the school. Folks, we're talking to the Connecticut State Principal of the Year, leader of a Blue Ribbon a National Blue Ribbon School, here with us live, Dr. Uh, Smith Davis. I want to I want to ask a follow up question. So, so you you talked about every student feeling valued, respected, and inspired to achieve. Talk to us about what that looks like relative to you and your capacity of leader. How do, how does one go about leading the effort? toward ensuring that students do in fact feel that they are valued, respected, and inspired to want to achieve excellence? Well, first they have to know they can connect you and approach you. You have to be approachable. That door is always open. Um, nobody's perfect and they know that. I have assemblies or talk with them usually at lunch so I'm not interrupting their instructional time to get a message across to talk about what it is um, I would like for them, how I believe in them, how we all believe in them, how, um, what our job is. We only have two school rules. Rule number one, the adult is always in charge for safety and learning. Rule number two, should you forget, go back to rule number one. So okay. we're not there just the boss or to say that we're in charge. We're there to make sure you're safe and that you learn. Um, and so children know that no matter what happens, they're gonna have their say. They're gonna be able to speak to an adult about something when they have an issue there's someone to talk to them. If there's something they need, we're going to do all we can to provide it. So kids actually, um, they know that. They can tell you that when you walk in um, to the school, that that's important to them. You and know, we, we want them to talk. We want them to, to be important. Yeah. You know, you you said something that uh, I didn't miss, and I don't think anybody on this on this platform missed. You said you got two school rules. That's it. State those again. Rule number one, the adult is in charge for safety and learning. That's our job because we want to make sure, and I explain it to them, that you have a place where you can come and learn. Two, our job is why we took this is to make sure that you learn as much as possible at this level because this is a foundation in which you, we are building and to support you. Rule number two, should you forget, go back to rule number one. Um, that's it. And that drives our school. Um, our children know it. They, you know, not that they recite it, the fact that what it is, we're all there to do. And that is to support them. So playing devil's advocate, there's got to be somebody on the other side of my camera or someone who will see this later on who's saying, but what about the rules as they relate to behavior? right discipline etc are you they they may be saying are you kidding me right well, talk to us about that that person that may that may have that skepticism say again it goes back to that culture and climate so you talk about those rules you have those expectations those are set up front with the parents prior to school even starting and meeting with them um your open house and also um you have to talk about what they are and the kids setting those rules, having say in the classroom, but then the teacher as well as um, knowing that they are the first um, as far as that. And so when behaviors do present themselves, that there's a plan. So the plan has to be something that everybody knows. It has to be clearly communicated. We can all have discipline. We can all have a bunch of rules. We can all have this and that. But if you don't get the community and stakeholders to buy in what you're doing, our job is to educate. So all the behaviors, we're going to help with some of them because there's a root cause um, and other things we need your support with because there's no way we're going to be able to teach and do our jobs with all of these behaviors. And then we need the support of the district leaders and the community to come in and support with that 
because it takes everyone. There's there's a lot going on with behavior. So I, I get it. And so when you have that um that think in those two school rules, you have things that fall under that. You have to create structures because it just doesn't happen just like that. You have structures in place, meetings that you have, town halls, gatherings, visits in the classroom. And then when stuff happens, rather peers are talking about it or discussing what the options will be. Um, you, you just have to be hands-on and involved. And so that comes across again with the culture and climate. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. I'm going to say this prematurely, Doc, but uh, it's it's time to write that book. It's it's time to write that book. It's, hey, it's hey, a process. Hey, it's, hey, it's hey, a hey process. fam out there, uh, if you agree with me, put right in the thread right now. Say, Doc, it's time to write that book. Just write that for me, right? <laughs> it's in process. <laughs> right there, right in there, fam. Say, say, it's time to write that book, man. So, so I got. I said I had a three-parter. So going back to the bullet point, the talking point, it says cultivating a a positive school climate and culture is at the heart of our mission. Here's my question to you: What is the mission? The mission is that for all students uh, to be proficient when leaving the school. That is the that that is the ultimate goal. And what we're going to do is everything possible to help you be there, where you need to be. And that takes the students, that takes the staff, and definitely the community. The parents have to be involved in order to make this vision and what we see for your children to be that portrait of the graduate. That's very important. You can't have that if everyone's not involved. You can't have it. You see, you see all you see what they're saying, right? Yes, yes, yes. I hear you, everybody. <laughs> There's a lot more. I can't get them all on, niggas. Thank let, me, you. let me keep going. Um, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Number three here. Um, where we at here? Here we go. Here we go. So, championing equity. Yes. That's that word that scares people. Uh, for all students is non negotiable. Championing equity for all students is non negotiable. We're committed to ensuring that every child, regardless of background, has access to quality education and the resources they need to succeed. So that's that's the third talking point that Doc sent to me. So I, I had I think I got a two parter here. And, and again, that word equity can be triggering. I know this because of the work I do. So my question to you is, how do you go about getting staff? To embrace this word despite the politics that potentially surround it? Um, first, you got to be up front and, and they need to know who, who we're serving. Who, who are your people? Who are your students? Who are your, your families? And once you get to really understand who that student is, what the need is or what you think the need is for that child, um, it's important that you know what are things are available for your. Um, I'm sorry. What things are available for staff to understand that, and they need to know what equity is. It's not. Um, it's giving the children, every child, what they need in order to succeed. And so sometimes um, you, you may have people that have a problem with that because they really don't understand. They think everybody should have the same. Everybody should be treated the same. And you can't do that because all students are different. All people are different. Everyone has a talent. Nobody is the same. So getting people to understand that and, and, and talking that. And then, of course, having the leaders, which I'm blessed to have, that believe in that and try to supply what it is that you need to those children to be successful. So let's, let, let me throw a hypothetical at you. So there, there's- Babe, you can hear all of that on here, go ahead. Okay, so let me throw this hypothetical at you. So there's um there there's a, there's a, a, a percentage of uh, staff members and they've they've dr they've drank the Kool Aid, and this 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 word equity that our principal keeps talking about, I I just can't do anything with that. I just can't embrace it, um, because they don't for due to lack of understanding, ignorance. 
Um, how do you bring them around? Because somebody, and the reason I would ask you that, that would double down that way is because someone on this call, they're dealing with that right now, right? I know that because it's because it's too, it's all too common that I got folks on that staff that here we trying to we, we we're trying to ensure that we're giving children an equitable experience in the in the school and in the classroom where we're meeting them where they are as they are as opposed to looking at them as if they were all a, came out of the same cookie cutter and 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 then there's some some politics there there's some teachers there that I nah, I, I I can't do that man. you know I you know my politics are this way and I I I I can't mess with that word what, what would you, what would you, how, how would you combat that? Well, first, it, you got to be really talk with people. You got to know, you know, what is their background? What is it? What are those things that fear that they fear? Um, are they aware of their own biases? Because we all have them and what that actually means. And so if people don't understand that, it's hard to understand someone else's background or someone else's culture. And that conversation, it is critical to have. And so you do have to, um, must have a district that is open and a school to talk about that. That is hard. And bringing the um, community in on it. Um, it is rough. It, it, it is rough, but it can be done. You have to let the person know that you're there or individual or teacher, that you're there to nurture and educate them and assist them with them. And once we get down to learning the individual that's in front of you, each one of them and what their needs are is no different than what someone else would want for their child. So you have to work at it. And, and I must say, I'm thankful and blessed that people have come along the culture and climate has changed so that we understand that. I think um, the pandemic happening got us all to look um, what we didn't know, why we need to change and do things different for all students and what um, equity actually means. So I'm thankful for that. Um, I think it is something where we're going to continue to have to have talks and focus on uh, because as time changes or staff changes, because that's what happens when um, new people or individuals, they're not with the same thinking or mindset that you have. But it does take time. I will tell anybody it's not anything easy to do. I will just tell you to keep at it because you're there for the students. And um, and sometimes if they're not, people are not there, then maybe there's somewhere else they'd rather be because this is the focus and what needs to happen for little Keisha, little Debbie, little Wanda, whoever it has to be. It, it, this is what's going to take place. So um, we all need to get on the bus and move. We all need to get on the bus and move. <laughs> and, and the reason I would even double down like that is because for the fam out there, once again, we're, we're, you know, we're talking about a guest today who is the state level principal of the year, right? In this case, Connecticut principal of the years. But we're also talking about someone who's simultaneously a National Blue Ribbon School um, awardee, right? In terms of the school itself under the leadership of Dr. Uh, Keisha Smith Davis. So we're talking about someone who who has taken this word and and and, and led the effort toward young people receiving an equitable opportunity to be successful within their schools that that matters so i wanted somebody who who who, who champions this to use the languages on the screen uh to be able to talk about the significance of it being a part of our reality so 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 with that um you, you indicated championing equity for all students is non-negotiable um elaborate on that line for us um it is going to happen. Um, every child comes to school and and every parent, regardless to what's going on, want their child to have the best education and that we owe each child. So no matter what it is, whatever we have to do, we need to make sure that we have the resources and the tools to do it for each person because every child is different. When I say non-negotiable, that means it's going to happen. And that's the purpose as to why we're in education or teaching, because we want what, what is right. Um, put those strategies and things in place in the classroom, uh, whatever it is that you need to do for those children. We don't have um, the, the opportunity to do anything different because then we're leaving children behind and that's not the focus. And it's not okay to have 60, 70, 80, any of them pass. It's non-negotiable, it, it just can't happen. 
I think I, I, I think I got to I, I want to stay there on that last thing you just said. You said having 60, 70 or 80 is um is it, it, did you use not the words not acceptable or just not yeah, I think is not acceptable. That's yeah. not acceptable. So because it's it's very easy to put a goal. We're, we're going for 80 percent. Right. We're going for 60 percent or, or or realistically, in, in some places, we're we're striving for 40 percent. Right. It depends on where we are. Um, and, and, and quite frankly, as a rookie, I was one of those folks, not the 40, but the but the 70, 80. But at some point it hit me. It, it hit me like a ton of bricks. So as they say that I'm saying to my school when I'm standing on that stage at 80 percent, at 70 percent that we are striving for 80%. I'm telling 20% of y'all, you can fail and we're still going to celebrate. That that hit me one day. It, I was on the stage it, as I said it to them. We, I, mean, you, you know, I used to get hype on them stages. We're going for 80% proficiency and we got this. I'm yelling and screaming, jumping up and down. And, and then I say, man, you just told 20%. Y'all can go home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so at that point, I ripped all them goals. I had them like every classroom had the eighty percent in it, right? I, I posted them myself. The hallways all over the building, four stories high. It said eighty percent. After school that day, I ripped every sign down, and and I put one hundred percent. The teachers that were very comfortable with with looking me in my eyes and telling me how they felt because I had those are the ones I really loved and respected because they're gonna because they're gonna keep me straight, right? So 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 the teacher came to me. I, I want to say his name, but I don't want him to get mad at me. He came to me and he said, Kefele, don't you think you setting us up for failure? And my response to him, I said, are you telling me that your students can't hit that mark? Well, I'm not saying mine, but what about the rest? Don't, don't worry about the rest. Just you. And he said, all right, then I support this 100% goal. And that's where we, we kept it for the rest of my tenure in that building. Right? Talk to us about that. Um, a hundred percent is 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 the goal period. There's there's no exception. And I was saying that 60, 70, or 80 percent of students failing is not an option. Um, the goal needs to be a hundred percent. A lot of times, just like you said, individuals are afraid or teachers get nervous because they're worried if they're going to be um, how can I say evaluated based on if I don't get 100 percent Why not try to do that anyway? Um it's important that 100% you believe that that can happen because what you believe in what you think will come out and show with your students. And if they do hit 80, it's okay because next year our goal is something else. It is 100%. And so you can't move if you don't have those goals um, and, and believe that you can. It may start at a 20% proficiency, move to 30%, but the goal still is 100%. Because that's the that's what you're reaching for. That's what has to happen. And no child should be left behind anywhere um, in education when that is the goal. It makes us nervous, but it's okay. Our children deserve the best and a quality education. Love it, love it. Hey, folks, again, we're, we're talking to the Connecticut Principal of the Year elementary level, Dr. Keisha Smith-Davis. Um, we're live, and she's also national Blue Ribbon School, uh, leader of a national Blue Ribbon School in Connecticut as well. Danbury, Connecticut to be exact. Um, number four, keeping parents informed and engaged is crucial. We prioritize clear communication about our educational strategies, goals, and how families can support their children's learning journey at home. And and I got a two parter here. And the first part is, you know, there, there, there could be out there some, someone out there saying, hey, if 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 I could get them to come out and be a part of us, then 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 I could I could keep them informed and engaged. I can't get them to come out. So I can't I, I can't get them. I can't get that information to them and I can't keep them engaged in what we're doing. What might you say to that leader? It's possible, especially now with all the different platforms we have. So if students, parents can't come, you know, we have online, we have interpreters, we have different things we need to do. We have the technology 
whether it's your phone, your laptop, or whatever to help you uh, with that. It means going to those parents. In order for you to move a school or to make those gains, you must have uh, parents involved in order to do that. You have to educate the parents on what is happening at school and with their child because that's something that child teachers, you can't just do it by yourself. Um, you need that. That's a high leverage, uh, an opportunity for you to move your school. So if you're setting those goals and the parents understand and kids need to know where they are, that they're actually speaking about those goals, those things they want to do. You're putting those strategies, uh, those tools in place for the student and for um, the staff. The kids will move. once And, and I will tell you, I know a lot of times parents, you may have parents that don't come to school for whatever the reason, they're not comfortable. It is our job to make sure we find that out and make them feel comfortable and want to be at the school. A lot of times individuals will tell you what has happened to me as to why I don't come to school or uh, what was said to me and how I feel. And that is something you have to constantly with your staff and community work on because they are, the, they are an important key of moving the school and being successful. So it is crucial to make sure that they're involved. When school starts, there are three times that uh, parents are visiting the school. I have them in in August prior to teachers coming, letting them see the school, making sure they um, uh, know what it is that we do. You also have your um, visit. You know, the parents want to come in. Um, and see the teacher. So they're getting that information there. Um, and parents, that's an opportunity for them to get to know who we are as well as the teachers and the staff. And then of course you have, by the time open house happens, the second week of school, they have visited the school or phone calls have been made, uh, communication to those parents who for whatever reason could not get to those one of three meetings. And that's important because people need to know you care. Mm -hmm. Let me give you this scenario. Um, when my children, who are adults, 33, 30, and 24, when they were students in school, as far as the parent-school relationship, I was, I'll, I'll call myself, just in the context of this discussion, I was, I was a bad parent, meaning that I was walking in there with skepticism, and I was critical of the administration and some of the teachers every time I went to visit those schools throughout the years that they were in school because of my own upbringing. So, 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 so in my mind, schools failed me. I, I had to figure out how to navigate life because schools did not prepare me to do that. So now I'm going into these meetings for my children with that vantage point. Like, like you failed me, what are you now doing for my kids? Right. So this is this, 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 this may be somewhat curveballish, but let me let me throw it at you anyway. So here I come, this hostile parent. I don't mean I'm in there like tearing people apart, but I, but 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 I am, I think I'm intimidating people, right? Because I'm wearing my principal's hat when I'm in their meeting when I'm in their offices. And, and there were times, I don't mind admitting this on this platform, there were times when I said, I need to train you on how to lead a school. I said that to parents, uh, to, um, to principals. Now, I was not, I was, I was a principal at the time. I need to train you on how to lead a school. So that's the kind of meetings I'm having. So it can be hostile because I don't like what's happening with my children in your school as the leader of that school. So maybe I need to come in here and lead it for you. So those are the kinds of things I would say in those meetings so so again curveballish question i'm one of the parents doc i'm a principal right and i'll come into your office and i'm coming in i'm, I'm not upset with you i'm upset because of, of 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 the fact that school public school in this case failed me how might you win me over first i need to, i need to listen I really need to sit down and listen because you're coming in um, with information and things that I don't know about you or your background or whatever. So it's important to be a good listener. 
And a lot of times in education, we always want to give the answer, but we have to be listeners. You have to sit down and listen because people are coming in um, telling you their story or really listening. When I say listen, pay attention to what they're actually saying to you, um, how they're feeling about the school. And making sure that at any time that that door is open, that those conversations can be had with myself or with the teacher. So you do have, and, and you know, you do have parents or who are very savvy and not savvy and knowledgeable who do want to come in and and tell you exactly what to do or what should happen. But I think um, having that com communication, those meetings that you need to have up front, and allowing people to express their thoughts and sitting down to problem solve with them. So really, what what is it that you like to have happen? Because I don't know everything. And, and so if I'm telling you that I'm human, then we all can grow. And I think when educators, if we have that, we know it all and nothing else can come in to help us. We don't move as individuals or grow. So even if you do come in and you, you know, you want to tell, give me the left and right side of what you think and your brain is right. Um, my due diligence is to listen and to think about other things on ways to try to work with you because we're all in here in the best interest of who the child that's here. Um, what it is that you're bringing or your baggage or what you're mad about should not um, stop the both of us from working on what's best for the child. And that has to be the first and always in the forefront. Yeah. Yeah. You know, folks out there who tuned in last week um, when I had my three of my former teachers on and they were telling you, who I used to be. <laughs> well, that person that they were describing when I was, you know, I was, I was really focused back then. I'm focused now, but I smile a lot more now, right? Well, I was that the, the guy they were describing, those of you who were on last week or saw the video, that's who I was as parent as well, you know, as far as my relations with the school, you know. And uh, you know, I was a little intense back in them days. I, I think I've I've cooled out a little bit. I mean, I'm still I, I mean, I'm still intense about the work, but I think in terms of the way I approach people and deliver whatever it is I'm saying, I've kind of fallen back a little bit. You know, that comes with time and age and that type of thing. But it but but I hadn't reflected on that in a long time until this conversation. You know, I'm like, yeah, I used to go in there. Yo, let me let me show you how to lead this school because you obviously don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and, and most of the time it's like you know I, I, you know people know me in, in jersey so most of the time when i they knew who i was you know so it wasn't like i was just like you know baruti and jabari and cabria's father they they knew what the, what, what what this kafele thing was you know so it's like dang this guy in here flexing on me you know so uh you know but it it is what it is i'm not that guy no more y'all I'm, I'm older now i've mellowed out Right. Let me go to this next one. We 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 getting there, y'all. We on number five. I got seven all together. Um, let me read this one. Ensuring the safety of our school community is a top priority, encompassing not just physical safety, but also creating an environment where students and staff feel emotionally secure. And 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 that's 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 really the area that um that I wanted to look at, that they feel emotionally secure. Um, Doc, I, I say this to my audiences all the time, and I'm just going to say it to you. Um, let me be a student. Um, I'm, and I'm, I'm not going to give a, a, a direct description of the student because I don't want to get caught up into a stereotype. But, Doc, I'm not like everybody else. I don't dress like them. I don't talk like them. I don't, I don't know the latest slang. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't hang with them. I'm not into the things they're into. I don't look like them. I don't wear the latest hairstyle that they wear. You know, I'm, I'm just me and I'm very comfortable in my skin, but I feel lonely in this school. That's real. Hey doc, what, 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 what could you say to me to make me feel like I belong here? First and foremost, it, to let people, especially children, know you love them. You have to be able to say it and with passion and conviction. And despite who you are, that you have to have them understand 
that everybody is different. No two people are the same. And who you are is not an issue or concern. And that should not be something trying to fit in because a lot of kids, that, that's what it is that they want to do. They want to fit in with everyone else. And so when trying to do that, a lot of times they can feel isolated or alone. Um, we talk about that. We have been involved in what's called Ben's Bell. We were one of the first schools to receive that national recognition to talk about being kind because that is something you have to constantly um, talk about in order for that child or any child to feel um, that may feel isolated. Um, that that I mean that is just very important. I mean, and then also having again, I'll go back to parents having that conversation about that that these children or your child is feeling that way. How we can help in school if there are other services or things that they may need. If not, that they have somebody in school that they can come to. That is important that kids be able to know I can go to so and so to the social worker. Uh, to the psychologist, to this teacher and tell them, and I'm okay. And they're going to assist me with the problem. And that goes back to the two school rules because our job again is to make you feel safe and you need to be able to learn. And if children don't feel they're a part of something or involved, it's hard for them to participate in anything or to learn, especially in education. You got that right. I mean, how, how, how am I going to focus on math? and science and social studies and language arts and, and and i'm concerned about the way i'm being perceived by my peers whether it be in the classroom whether it be in the the cafeteria whether it be in the locker room whatever the case may be it's uh it's it's a difficult situation to be in but i think that when that school that that, that youngster is in a school with leadership like yourself and and always distinguish leadership from leader so so the leadership that you exhibit then i think there's a higher probability that i can just come in here and be me and be comfortable within this building so so here you say i want to i want to read this again because i want to i want to give you this part two question um you said in, in in ensuring the safety of of our school community is a top priority that's the main point right here in terms of my question. But let me go on and read the rest of it. Encompassing not just physical safety, but also creating an environment where students and staff feel emotionally secure. So that first part, um, ensuring the safety of our school community is a top priority. There's 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 a veteran principal out there. It could be a, a it could be a rookie principal out there. And They've got all these pressures on their back. They've got all these demands on their back. There's so much on the plate, this wide contents through the roof. The question that I have for you is if 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 safety and, and if, if, if ensuring the safety of the school community is a top priority, what does that look like if I've got if I feel like I'm so overwhelmed by everything else that's on my plate? Well, first. Well, first with the whole school, um, it will start with individuals. I'm just going to play this out. The individuals that are outside, the individuals that are around, always making sure there's someone there. But in the classroom, before you can get to that content or that curriculum, you have to have order. You have to have routines. Um, that is not what I'm worried about as an instructional leader when school starts. My concern is that the children know what they need to do, why they need to do it, where to put their items, what's accessible to them, um, uh, why I need to raise my hand, why I can't just yell out, why I'm not putting my hands on individuals, and those rules come into play. So those things have to be established first, and it may take the first couple of weeks of school because kids got to understand there's an expectation of how we behave, how we treat each other, and that will lead to you as the instructional leader in the classroom to be able to teach. You cannot do that if a child doesn't feel safe or the teacher is um, unable to do his or her job. Um, establishing those routines and making sure that kids understand why we're kind, why we're talking about this. Um, and, then, and, and again, those parents being involved in that as well, because you cannot do this job without the support of the community. 
and do it without the support. I, I, I love it. I love it. We got two more, y'all. We got two more. Where are we at here? We got two more. Establishing and communicating clear expectations for staff, students, and families is key to fostering a cohesive and productive learning environment the floor is yours. What are you saying to us? Just go back to the culture and climate. When those parents come to visit, uh, making sure they understand what, you know, all everybody's role is, um, what it is we want. We want the best. We want your children to flourish. We want them to be um, that portrait of the graduate that we promote in our district. Uh, we want them to learn. And so we need your support with doing that. And here's the things that we need from you. And also with the staff to understand that what is our role? Um, here are the expectations. We want 100% of our students prior to leaving this school to be at proficiency and not worry about if, we, well, what happens if we don't? Let's talk about the pot being positive on what we need to happen and that that is something that we're striving for. Um, what you say that you mean what you say, um, what you do, they see me do. And you can't just uh, expect or say something and people not understand or going back to make sure that everyone was clear with the message that was sent out. Uh, the families understand that with the message and that what is communicated to the students and then what the students' expectations, what they need to do what to know. And then what do students and families want from us? Because everybody has expectations. So you have to be able to talk about that and work again as a community and collaboratively to make those things happen. And, 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 you know, we hear ever so often, I know you do, and I know I do when, when staff in particular talk about the fact that the, the communication's not good. We're, we're, we're not informed. We haven't been told right now. Sometimes it's because they didn't pay attention. Right. But other, other times, you know, it, 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 it could be a breakdown in, in the flow of communication. Um, from administration to staff or from administration to parents or to kids, what 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 still students, whatever it is. But that that communication piece is you and I, we 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 it just can't be overstated. It's 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 so critical. And and I'm and I'm I'm really preaching to the folks out there. It's 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 so critical, folks, especially because so many people that are on the platform are new, right? Or aspiring, or they're still assistants and not principal yet. That communication, I did a whole, I think I did like five sessions. If you go back to the channel, AP and New Principals Academy, I did about five solo sessions just on communication alone. So, they, and that's because there's so much to say about communication, but your community, your communication, how you go about communicating, the vehicles that you use are so critical to the maintenance and the growth of your school. Yes. And if that if that if that communication is not flowing the way that, that, that you need it to flow, some of the problems that you think you have may not be the problems that you actually have. If some of those problems could be rooted in the fact that the communication is 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 not up to par, it's substandard. So keep that in mind. I got one more, y'all, and then we go to our rapid fire. Addressing mental health and providing support for all stakeholders is fundamental. Um, and, 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 but it, there's more, I couldn't fit it all on the screen. And the rest of it was we're dedicated to building a supportive network that includes access to resources in promoting a culture of openness and care. Let me, let me, let me, let me just start this off right this way. And then I want to, I want to give it to you, doc. During my principal years, I, I have zero recollection of the language of mental health. Right now, it doesn't mean that mental health wasn't an issue, but later on, after I was long gone, it became a real thing. You know, now, like, for example, we know that in the African-American community, it was almost taboo for a black man to seek out mental health therapy. That's not a, that's not taboo anymore. That's that's something that's welcomed. It's something that if one needs it, then you pursue it. Right. Mm -hmm. But so, so when we talk about mental health at the building level, we just weren't that we just weren't using that language back then. So right. we were we were missing the boat. But here now, here we are, and we're talking mental health all the time because it's a real thing. You know, now people, you know, people don't go to work certain days because they need a mental health day. You heard me say 
that uh, I didn't write my commentary the past two weeks because I needed some mental health time. I, I, you know, how long does it take to write a commentary? I literally don't have, ha, ha, I just don't have it to write it and I don't write it, right? So it's a real thing. So, so I say all that to say this. I want you to elaborate on the statement, including the part I didn't put on the screen. You, I'm sure you have it. But also um, just a, a, address how the addressing of mental health what that looks like under your leadership. So every day I, I strive to make sure, I really try to make sure that I not only get to the classroom, but to get to know and talk to my staff because it's important that they know that one, that I care. And two, in conversation, you're going to hear things if you're talking to individuals, if they're stressed about a situation or things that are bothering them. And then making sure if I can do anything to help. One thing I will say, and I'm thankful we have um, our um, assistant superintendent um, who's over um, a lot of stuff dealing with this is always accessible, right? So when you have a need or I have a concern, I can call her and say, listen, this is what's happening or that uh, getting the individual to understand the importance of being feeling like they're in the right place because they're not going to be good to their students. And I always try to point that out. If you know that they're not having a good day or something is happening to make sure that they understand one, you care two, you're actually listening to them and then trying to provide resources to be able to support this individual. And that it is not anything to be ashamed of um, when you don't do those things and I'm and you're in there with my children, then I'm the I'm the problem because I need to make sure that you're okay while you're doing while you're doing what you need to do, which is providing that education for those students. Yeah. So when we talk about um dedicated support, that is even within the building, the team that we have, and it's a family. So everybody, because we built that as a team at, at Great Plain, cares about one another. And they will talk to each other and they will direct. It's not about telling the business, it's making sure that we all are taken care of one way or another. And I'm thankful uh, to be in a district where that support is provided or when I call um, our uh, superintendent now, our interim superintendent to tell her or to ask her for that, that those things will be addressed. Um, you know, not feeling that I can't call a personnel director and say, look, this is what's going on. Where can I get these resources? outside of this to support them or um, getting people comfortable to even talk about it. That's that's the main thing. You have to listen to people, um, love them and let them know that you do care. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, that's that's critical. That's vital. I appreciate that. I I, I, I love everything about this conversation. And uh, I want to I, I want to now transition to our Rapid fire, bam, impact questions. These are one, one, one word answer or one sentence answer. But anything over a sentence where you feel you got to put anything with that you got to add commas is too long. I'm going to say, eh. right? So uh... <laughs> that's not fair. Okay. <laughs> I uh, I see you, Dr. Marcus Jackson. Good to see you, my brother. All uh, right, here we go. Is education on the right path for underserved children? No. Can true equity occur in America's schools for Black, Brown, and other underserved students? Of course, as long as we have tools and commitment, committed people. Does Dr. Keisha Smith Davis' work contribute to the progress we desperately need? Yes. <laughs> If you could do a reset on your life, would your line of work be different or the same? Not, I wouldn't change one thing. I probably would go to school more, but that's about it. <laughs> Why do you continue to do this work? I love kids. I love what I do. And I love to help people. What fires you up within the work that you do? Um, I like to come in every day and be happy, um, trying to get my staff and my students happy. Uh, I think that's important. Um, being in the lives of others like that, that motivates me every day. How do they feel? Um, 
helping them to grow. That's enough. I'll, I'm uh, finished. <laughs> what, do you, what do you particularly love about the work you do? I love children to be able to learn and succeed when they come back and talk to you. I love it. What do you dislike about the work that you do? Um, not understanding why you, people will continue to do the same thing, get the same results and expect something else to change. That's so the mindset. Mm -hmm. What has been your greatest victory to date in this work? Um, working as a team and, and bringing stakeholders together to see the need to move a student's uh, school forward and why. I think changing the mindset, working at that, which takes time to build that culture and um, watching to see what the student outcome is as well as parent outcome. I would be, you know, I've never done this before, Doc. This is the first time I'm interrupting these questions because I, I have to seize the moment of what you just said. Hey, folks, did you notice the question? I said, what has been your greatest victory in this work? And she did not say becoming the Connecticut Principal of the Year. She did not say National School um, Blue Ribbon Award. She did not say the other accolades in the in, in the bio. She said building a team. I, 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 I can't go on. Right. I, I had to stop. Right. Because that, that's 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 instructive in and of itself. I thought she was going to say Connecticut Principal of the Year. Of course. Right. National Blue Ribbon School. And those other those other accolades that she got this this in the bio, she said building a team is her greatest victory. I've never I've never stopped these questions to do this. I had to do this. Right. That that like Judas Stoddard just said, who was with us last week. That's priceless. Right. Let's go. Um, what was your greatest mistake in this work? Thinking everyone is um, where you are. I think I want the best for the students. I mean, that was you just learn it and and think about how you're going to deal with it. What has been your greatest challenge in this work? Change in mindset, getting people to understand that you you have to do things different in order to see different results. And uh, students are first. Are you proud of your first year as an assistant principal? Yes, I had a wonderful team in Prince Edward County, Virginia, Farmville, who made sure of that. Are you proud of your first year as a principal? The same thing. Great Plain and Danbury had an outstanding team to help me. Yes. Who inspires you in your work? Um, I would say every day would be those. It would be the students and and what I'm committed to and my team. I'm thankful um, for my uh, my mom and um, family and most of all my husband who pushes me out there every day. Mm. What are you reading right now? Book, blog, article, tweet, anything? Yes, I'm reading a couple of things. Um, Dr. Jamel Gibson, The Blueprint, The Good Day Plan for Elementary, Cornelius Minor about equity. We yeah. got this. I love that. Um, I love Is My School a Better Because I Lead It from You. Um, that's something I think about every day. Um, Bettina Love is excellent. I love um, Punish for Dreaming. Yeah. So there are a lot of things that I, I'm reading that go back to the culture and climate and how to do what I'm doing better. Love it. Love it. What book would you recommend for our viewers this afternoon? Um, is my school a better school? Because um, Dr. C I mean, Principal Cafella, you can apply that to a company, a business, to your classroom. Is it better because I'm in front of it and I'm working with children? If not, move out the way. I appreciate you. I appreciate you immensely. What do you want to what What do you want to accomplish that you haven't accomplished yet? Um, I would say. Um, let's see what I haven't accomplished. Well, finishing my book. Um, yeah. they, still, they still writing it, by the way. I, I've been seeing it pop up. There you, my book. there you go. Are you satisfied with where you are now, professional? No. What could you say to a viewer out there who continues to face closed doors? What's for you is for you. When it opens, it is for you. And don't forget it. There you go. What could you say to a viewer out there that's lost their fire? They'll get back in and connect with those of us who are on fire and know your reason why you started. And lastly, if Dr. Keisha Smith Davis was a word in a dictionary, what would be your definition? Innovative. Innovative. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, 
Um, I want to once again say that this was phenomenal, and I thank you immensely for blessing the platform with all your all your knowledge and, and experience and wisdom. Um, I was going to ask you ask you to tell us the contact information, but first the emojis they remind me. Listen, y'all, you know what we do. Those of you who are part of the family, you've been with us, you know that we celebrate our guests with the emoji, our favorite emojis. So hit us with those emojis. Y'all been doing it all along, I see. So uh, keep them coming. Keep those emojis coming. That's the way we applaud our guests to let them know that their their message added value. It resonated with with us. We benefit from it. We can we can use it. We can we can take it back to our our jobs, our our schools, I should say, and 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 implement a lot of what was said. Whatever it is, however you received it, just give Dr. Smith Davis the um, emoji, and let me get my emoji. You know, I, you know what I use. I use my Louisville Slugger. You know, so you ought to go with my. My 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 um my my Pelicans Negro League baseball jersey, right? So you 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 certainly my, the, the Berkeley Pelicans, you certainly hit it out the park, grand slam every time you came to the plate. So good stuff, good stuff. I see them emojis. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Hey Doc, if somebody wanted to holler at you, um, social media DMs or whatever it is, um, whatever's most convenient for you, how could they reach you just to get some further insight? They can reach me at reach me at at Twitter at Davis um, Keisha Smith. They can reach me at um, Facebook Dr. Keisha Smith. Um, they can reach me um, at EK Consulting, um, and of course, um, my email is um, uh, uh, Davis Smith Keisha at, at Gmail. All one word. Very good. And those that may have missed it, then just rewind the video to that point. We're, we're one hour, 41 minutes and 40 to 50 seconds. So just go back there and, and, and it'll be there. But you just opened up a can of worms when you said consulting. Yes. So you're so you, you, you doing some consulting. Yes. You, you have a website yet? I do. EK Consulting. Oh, that's the website. Mm -hmm. All right. So EK Consulting. So now that, that Consulting. That, that changes everything, folks. Uh, I didn't realize our guest was out there teaching. So um, <laughs> you may want to bring her into your school or your district or your conference, right? Or your institute, whatever it is, you may want to bring her out because she's a wealth of information and obviously a wealth of accomplishment. So make sure you reach out on the website as well. And I'm going to go on the website myself uh, probably today. Um, let me close this out. But first, just once again, thank you, thank you, and thank you for, thank uh, you. for blessing us today. I'm a, I want you to stay there even when I go offline. So um, I've just got to do my closing rundown. Hey, fam out there, before you leave, appreciate you being here. Who you got in that Super Bowl? I'm going to go with the Chiefs, right? Uh, I think they're going to win big, but I'm going with the Chiefs. Who you got? But I thank you for all being here. Uh, this is week number 198. We got one more in the 100s next week, number 199. I'm bringing in some homies, um, some Jersey homies here. I got Dr. Vincent Stallings, who was with my very first guest. That's my that's my man. He's my very first guest. We're going to come back and have a different conversation along with Dr. Steve Webb, who was the custodian, the head custodian at the school that I was a teacher at um, in East Orange, New Jersey. And he became a principal there, a teacher there, a principal there. He's a pastor and he's Dr. Steve Webb. So, so don't tell me because you 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 have the humble beginnings that you can't live your dream, right? So we'll 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 talk more about that. The custodian, the head custodian, became the principal of a school, doctor and pastor. And then we got a new principal, Janabu Williams, also from East Stars, New Jersey, who's the principal of the school that I last led. So I'm calling this the rookie, the veteran. And the OG speak leadership. That's what we call it. The rookie, the veteran, because Vincent Stallings, Dr. Stallings, he's an OG. He's 60 now. So, so the rookie, the veteran, and the OG speak leadership. You you don't want to miss this for next week. These are guys I know, so I may hit them up with some real tough questions, right? So uh tune in. Next Saturday, 10 o'clock Eastern, Sean Hurt followed by Create and Educate with Dr. Sheikah Houston, Dr. Tammy Taylor at 10.30, myself at 10.55. Unlock the Middle, Sunday night at 7 with Dean Packard and Josh Tovar. 
and then Vill uh, Village Leadership Group. I haven't said them lately because I don't even know if they're on. But Ross Gaskins, Ross Gaskins, and Coach Williams Tuesdays and Thursdays. I got to look and see if they if they're still on. School Leadership Institute with Principal Kafele. Y'all got y'all can't miss that man. Come on down to Houston with me. School Leadership Institute with Principal Kafele. Come on down to Houston and join me in person, July nine and ten. Go to principalkafele.com and uh, scroll down the Principal Kafele announcements, and you'll see it right there. Click the link. Take you to event, what you call it, event bright, and then um, and and then register. Make sure that you get your hands. Uh, I appreciate y'all because y'all been keeping my books in that that Amazon top one hundred. So the assistant principal fifty is my school a better school because I lead it. The equity and social justice fifty, the aspiring principal fifty, the principal. 50 the the assistant principal identity since i'm on a roll um <laughs> closing the attitude gap not achievement gap the attitude gap the teacher 50 motivating black males to achieve in school and in life i do a lot of writing y'all and then i got four books that i don't have in print anymore i self-published them and they just stay old man I, it's, it's, they need to be revised so they're not in print and I got a new one on the on the computer manuscript that I just haven't released to the publisher yet called the Assistant Principal Impact. So that'll I'll let you know when when I submit that and then we'll we'll be looking for it. Subscribe to the AP and New Principals Academy YouTube channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We had 20,200 subscribers. So that's a blessing. Like and follow the AP and New Principals Academy Facebook page. And then lastly, as I always as I always close your diet your exercise and your disease virus precautions, right? Um, just take care of yourselves, folks. Eat right. I, I can't say that I did this week. I didn't. You know, it just wasn't possible with the, with the kind of travel that I did. So, you know, it is like fried foods got in me this week, you know, that type of thing, consecutive days. You know, it's sometimes it just, it's just unavoidable sometimes. You know, it's like you got a flight at, 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 at 10 o'clock, and at p.m. and the restaurants closing at like 9 30 and, and and half the food ain't there no more they ran out of salad or whatever it is i just got to put something in me or i'm gonna pass out you know like literally so you know but i'm making up for it now right exercise uh i'm getting ready to walk these streets of jersey city in about an hour because I, I i no treadmill this week it was completely impossible so the last time i exercised was last sunday However, I've been running through airports, getting a lot of steps. So that's the exercise I got. So I'm just being transparent. And uh, you make sure you get your work in, too. I know Josh Tovar been hitting that treadmill heavy. Sheikha Houston, the same thing. So, you know, so I'm going to try to do what you do today. But mine's going to be outdoors. Other than that, folks, appreciate you being here. You have a great week, an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Cock that fist back. One, two, three. Bang! I see y'all next Saturday for number 199, the OG, the veteran, and the rook. It's going to be a lively conversation. Thanks for being.